Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Toby Reed, Hans Conried, Gail Gordon, Elliot Lewis, Meredith Wilson and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Today, more Americans buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. Yes, Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. Well, George Burns is one of the millions of taxpayers who has until midnight tonight to file an income tax return, which explains the tense situation as we look in at the Burns home. Now, let's see. Figuring our income on the basis of the community property law, that would make... What law, George? The community property law. That's the California law that says half of everything I've got is yours and half of everything you've got is mine. Oh? Then how come I only get one-fourth of the money we make? Well, that's the way it works out, dear. Look, I'll show you. Here in my hand is a dollar and change. Yeah. Now half of everything I've got is yours. So here's 50 cents. Ah, thank you. Now half of everything you've got is mine. How much have you got? 50 cents. Half of it is mine. Hand it over. <laughs> there. See how it works? I see who it works. <laughs> now let's try that again, and this time I'll start with a dollar. Okay. Now, half of everything I've got is yours. So here's 50 cents. Thank you. And ha- uh, how does the second part go? Half of everything you've got is mine. How much have you got? 50 cents. Half of it is mine. Hand it over. <laughs> You were right, George. It comes out the same way no matter how you do it. (laughs) Oh, sure. Oh, I'll bet you get tired of me being so stupid, huh? Oh, sometimes it comes in real handy. (laughs) Now, let me figure some of the income tax deductions. Let's see, business expense. Now, what does that mean? Well, whenever we have a guest star on our program, we always take him to dinner. That's a business expense. Let's see, now we took Cary Grant to dinner. But he paid the check, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right, he did. Well, we took Bing Crosby to dinner. He paid the check, remember? Yeah, that's right. Well, last week we took Jack Benny to dinner. That's one for us. (laughs) Yeah, now we come to dependence. Total dependence and partial dependence. Gracie, what do I usually call your mother? Surely you're not going to put that in writing. (laughs) Uh, I don't mean that. Does your mother live on just the money we send her? Oh, she does right now. You see, my brother Willie got a job as a soda jerk, but he had to quit. Why? Well, a customer told him to squeeze a glass of orange juice. Well? And he squeezed the glass so hard it broke and cut his hand. (laughs) He's uh, he's some soda jerk. In fact, you can leave off the soda. (laughs) Now, let me finish this tax return. Uh, Come in. Hi, Burns. Hello, Bill. Hey, what are you doing, George? Uh, trying to figure out my income tax. And I'm helping him. Some help. If it weren't for Gracie, I could figure my income tax out much easier. If it weren't for Gracie, you wouldn't have any to figure. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Bill, uh, you know, I used to do all right. When I first met Gracie, I worked alone. So she told me, George. Did you ever pay the loan back? <laughs> Better run along, Bobby Clark. I'm very busy. <laughs> Listen, George, why don't you hire an income tax expert to do that for you? Now, the guy I've got knows all the deductions an actor can make. He's wonderful. Really? Sure. Takes off your entertainment, your publicity, your transportation, even takes off your clothes. George can undress himself. <laughs> 
it's out of grace. Look, I'll prove it. I placed that check. <laughs> and you know something else, George? If an actor hires a secretary to answer his fan mail, that's deductible. Well, I keep a secretary running all the time. You do? Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to catch her. <laughs> In other words, uh, you don't get enough fan mail to answer. What? I get baskets of fan mail. Well, some of it even comes with just my initials on it. W.H.G. William Horace Goodwin. Oh, no. Woman's heavenly gift. <laughs> That's really a shy little boy. Yeah, well, he's got a point, George. Yes. I think Bill is one of the handsomest actors in Hollywood. Me? Well, sure, and I know someone who thinks you're even better than that. Me? That's the one. <laughs> See you later. Goodbye, Bobby. I'll never get this tax return finished. It's so darn complicated. Oh, look, George. Here comes Mr. Judson, the Texas oil man. Oh, fine. Now I'll have to stop and listen to him brag about Texas. C come in. Howdy, little lady. Hello, Mr. Judson. Howdy, little man. Hi. Say, you sound kind of depressed. I am depressed. Right at this moment, I hate taxes. Why, you miserable little Yankee. Oh, Mr. Judson, put I... down that gun. He said taxes, not Texas. <laughs> oh, oh. For a minute there, I thought you had spoke treason. <laughs> but, but, now, you hadn't ought to hate taxes, neither. I don't, Mr. Judson. It's just making out the return I hate. I'm glad to send my money to the government. Me too. It's a privilege to send your money to a city that's named after that great Texan, George Washington. <laughs> now, what makes you think George Washington was from Texas? Well, wasn't he the father of our country? Yeah. Wasn't he first in war and first in peace? Yes. Wasn't he the greatest man we ever had? Yes. Bound to be from Texas. <laughs> Took his little hatchet and chopped down the cactus tree. Mr. <laughs> George. Uh, Mr. Judson, I'll bet your income tax must be plenty with all your money. All what money? I only got twenty-nine million. Oh, I I thought it was twenty-eight million. Yeah. Well, now my wife ran into a mite of trouble down home. Had a little trouble. Yeah. Right? Yeah, she did. The other night she was milking the cow, missed the bucket, a big stream of milk squirted into the ground, and up come another durned all well. <laughs> you call that trouble? Why, it got oil all over old Bossy. Oh, oh, old Bossy. You have the cutest names for your wife. <laughs> by the old mill stream. Gosh, Meredith, that song sure brings back happy memories of my old college glee club. Toby, that song is full of memories for lots of folks. It's a favorite with all kinds of singing groups, from the corner barbershop quartet to the community chorus. Well, that's just it, Meredith. Folks in this country have always been fond of singing. Yes, in the auditorium of the village church, in the local school hall, or in some genial neighbor's comfortable living room, the cheerful blending of friendly voices has long been a warm and well-loved part of the American scene. Yes, and just as much a part of this American scene as our taste for a friendly cup of America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. Americans love coffee. It's our national drink. And today it's a telling fact that more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. 
Flavor explains this nationwide preference. The superb good to the last drop Maxwell House flavor you can credit to the skilled blending of these choice coffees. Manizal is for Melanus. Medellin's for richness. Other choice coffees for robust vigor. And Bucaramanga's for fine, full body. All adding up to great coffee, rounded in flavor and radiant roasted to the very peak of flavor perfection. Friends, why not start at once to enjoy America's favorite coffee yourself? Now this you can do for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. Just insist on Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Did you finish the income tax return, George? No, I ran out of ink. So I called the drugstore, and uh, they're going to send over a bottle. Good. By the way, that, uh, that ink bottle was full last week. Where did it go? Well, uh, you know the blue socks I gave you for Christmas? Yeah. And your tan shoes didn't match them? Yeah. Now they match. <laughs> Gracie, you didn't. Yes, I did. I was a fool to think you didn't. <clears throat> go call the drugstore and tell them to hurry with the ink. Yes, dear. Why do I always leave this income tax till the last minute? Uh, come in. Mr. Burns? Yes? I'm the delivery man from the drugstore. Good, good. I've been waiting for that ink. I just started today. In fact, you're my first delivery. Well, that's nice. <laughs> I'm so happy with this job. <laughs> you know why I'm happy with this job? It gives me a chance to help humanity. I deliver things that people need. I need ink. Now take this bottle of liver pills. I figure that's gonna help somebody's liver. Nice figuring. I'm so happy with this job. <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy. Have you got my ink? You bet I have. I deliver things that people need. Now take these corn plasters. Likely as not, they'll help somebody's corns. Again, you figured it out. I'm so happy I'm with that. <laughs> There's nothing in the whole world as wonderful as working for a drugstore. What business are you in, mister? I'm on the radio. Go to work for a drugstore before it's too late. <laughs> I'll speak to Mr. Owl in the morning. <laughs> Drugstores have things that people need. Now take your bottle of ink I'd love to <laughs> Just think of its possibilities You could write a famous play Or an immortal poem I could if I had the ink Maybe Maybe you'll write a cheery note To one who is ill Maybe Or a love letter to a beautiful woman I happen to be married Oh <laughs> Then if you wrote a love letter To another woman That would cause trouble You bet it would your wife might find the letter in your pocket. That's right. And when she read it, she'd get mad and leave you. Look, man. And all because the drugstore made me deliver this ink. Look, well, they can't force me to come between a man and his wife. I won't do it. I'll quit this lousy job. <laughs> all right, but give me the ink. And break up your home never. <laughs> there. Your home is saved. Bye. <laughs> Well, that's fine. Now these shoes match my blue socks, too. <laughs> also, the rug and the walls. Hey, George, I thought I... Oh, oh, my goodness. There's ink splashed all over the place. Had a little accident. Oh, there are even a couple of ugly blue spots on your face. Here, I'll wipe them off. Take it easy. Those are my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Now I get it. 
Take this income tax stuff down to the expert in the Taft building and let him figure it out. And here's 50 bucks to pay him. I'll go get a mop and clean up this mess. Well, $50 just to make out income tax? Oh, that's ridiculous. I can buy one of those dollar tax books and do it myself. That'll save George $49. And think what he could buy with $49. Hat, gloves, shoes, coat. Why, he can buy me lots of things. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> Dr. Miller, I just had to come by. I have some wonderful news for you. Well, what is it, Gracie? Well, you know those treatments you've been giving me where I lie on the couch and tell you all about myself? Psychoanalysis, yes. I treated your mind. Well, you certainly helped me. How could I miss? Any change was bound to be an improvement. <laughs> oh, you, you'll be proud of me. I, I just did a brilliant thing. I figured out George's income tax. Well, you are cured. No more of those long hours on the couch. And guess how the income tax came out? The government owes George $30 million. <laughs> I'll arrange the pillows on the couch. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not tired. Gracie, how did you arrive at that terrific figure? Oh, uh, no starches and lots of exercise. <laughs> I mean George's income tax figure Oh, well, I, I bought a book on income tax And found out all the deductions Now, for example, the book said That an actor can deduct up to $500 for dues Yes Well, in California, we have dues every morning <laughs> Gracie And at $500 a due, that adds up <laughs> Gracie, these dues are not the liquid kind. Oh, no? I've stood knee-deep in California dues. <laughs> well, even with deductions like that, how could you possibly arrive at $30 million? Oh, well, of course, the big item was entertainment. The book says if an actor entertains people in the course of his business, that's deductible. And at the rate of $2 per person. Well? Well, every time George goes on the radio, he entertains 20 million people. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Well, now that's, that's $40 million right there. But I know the government needs money, so I knocked off 10 million. Well, it's awfully nice out here. Yeah, live and let live. <laughs> $30 million is plenty. Do you realize what this will mean to George, Doctor? Yes, I think I do, Gracie. <laughs> Speaking as a psychiatrist, I would say that George will develop a pronounced isolation complex induced by extended incarceration and complicated by severe claustrophobia due to prolonged inability to alter his environment. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> They'll throw him in the clink. <laughs> Yeah, they'll put him in Alcatraz. You falsified his tax form. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is terrible. But he's not to blame. Let them send me away to wherever they send women. To Hatchapi. Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's George's return. Therefore, they'll hold George responsible. Well, how long will they keep George in Alcatraz? Oh, that's hard to say, Gracie. I know a man who defrauded the government of only $20, and he was sent away for 20 years. 20 years for $20? Yeah. And in George's case, it's, it's $30 million. Boy, will he be old when he gets out. <laughs> Here's Meredith Wilson on the orchestra and Stanley Steamer.
Say, Gracie, I, I came as soon as I got your call. What's the trouble? Oh, Bill, it's terrible. I falsified George's form. Well, what's so bad about that? You've been padding his shoulders for years. Oh, no, no, no. It's his income tax form, and they're going to send him to Alcatraz. Oh. Think what Alcatraz will do to George. Think of him with his face all pale and his little shoulder stoop shuffling along with that hopeless, dead expression. Yeah. And then think of him after a few years in Alcatraz. Yeah. Oh, where is he? <laughs> Look, maybe, maybe George can escape. Oh, I doubt it, Gracie. It's an island in the Pacific. On, on one side is an ocean full of sharks. And what's on the other side? San Francisco. Yes, yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. That's where my mother lives. Say, that's right. Well, if George ever escapes, I know which way he'll swim. Oh, me too. I hope the sharks don't get him. I hope he never tries to escape, Gracie. They've got a terrible punishment for prisoners who do that. Yeah, what is it? They take away their Maxwell House coffee. Oh! <laughs> Rich, delicious, mellow Maxwell House, so wonderfully satisfying, good to the last drop. You know what happened then, Gracie? They go stir-crazy. Stir-crazy? Yeah. They go crazy because they can't stir that Maxwell House coffee. Ooh. Ooh. It's the very best in coffee drinking pleasure, yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. Oh, I'm sure George will behave himself, Bill. You know, they might even let George sing to the prisoners. No, Gracie. Taking away their Maxwell House coffee is the worst punishment they allow. <laughs> <laughs> That's fiendish enough You know, with more than a thousand brands to choose from More people buy and enjoy Maxwell House Than any other brand of coffee in the world Well, maybe it's not too late to save George I'll appeal to the governor Oh, that won't do any good Oh, then I'll appeal to his wife, the governess <laughs> Gracie, nothing can save George from Alcatraz Oh, dear Oh, I know what I'll do I'll soften the blow for him I I'll make it sound attractive Attractive. Well, sure. It'll be like a daytime radio serial. Alcatraz can be beautiful. <laughs> Gracie, it's an island, a prison with bars, a, a big, ugly rock. How can you say that's beautiful? Well, love will show me the way. When you're in love, you can imagine the ugliest thing in the world is beautiful. And I'm in love with George. <laughs> Good luck, Gracie. George? Yes, dear? George, how would you like to live on an island? An island? Yes, in the blue Pacific. Might be nice. An island with palm trees? Yeah. And sandbars? Take away the sand and you've got it. <laughs> Huh? Oh, it's a beautiful place. Once you're there, you just can't leave. <laughs> Holds you in its spell, huh? Did you say spell or sell? <laughs> spell. Oh, sure. I love the ocean. Would be nice to lie there and listen to the breakers pounding on the rocks. Yes, making little ones out of big ones. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Oh, you love this island, dear. The change will do you good. Now, for instance, don't you get tired of people always calling you George. I never thought of it. Well, now, on this island, they call you something else. Like what? Like 7293. <laughs> 7293? Yes, and your closest friends could call you Seven. <laughs> seven G. Burns, eh? <laughs> <clears throat> Gracie, this island is beginning to sound a little wild. Besides, I like the modern conveniences. Does this island have electric lights, electric stoves, electric refrigerators? Even the chairs are wired. <laughs> the chairs are wired? Where is this place? I Hello, never... all. Gee, Bill Goodwin just told me the terrible news. He said that George is you going... No, Meredith, don't say it in front of George. Very well. He said that George was going to the P.E.N. <laughs> P.E.N.? Because he defrauded the government on his income, T.A.X. I'm going to the pen because of my income tax? 
Darn it, he caught on despite my precautions. <laughs> Gracie. And wouldn't you like to live on an stop island, that. dear? How could I how could I get into trouble on my income tax? It was made out by an expert. Oh, thanks, but I don't deserve the compliment. You made it out? Mm-hmm. Holy smoke, I'll go to jail for the rest of my life. Oh, cheer up, George. I knew a chap who was sent to prison for a crime more serious than yours, and he was only there for two weeks. Really? Yes. Then they hung him. (laughs) Nice of you to cheer me up. Oh, not at all. Another cheering thought is that Gracie might enable you to escape by sending you a cake with a file in it. No, no, that wouldn't help much, Meredith. You see, George is going to Alcatraz, and it's surrounded by water. Oh. Well, you might send a somewhat larger cake with a canoe in it. (laughs) <laughs> Look, Meredith, will you please tell me... Uh, come in. Is Mr. George Burns here? That's me. I'm from the income tax department. Oh. Oh, goodbye, Seven. <laughs> Listen, mister, I can explain everything. You see, my wife is... Now, who... there's nothing to explain, Mr. Burns. I just came over to thank you. Thank me? Sure. Imagine a big star like you taking the time and trouble to... Write a comedy tax return just to hand us fellows a laugh. Huh? <laughs> what a gag that was about the California dues. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that one? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a real comedian, Mr. Burns. How do you think of that stuff? Oh, it's just a gift. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fellows wanted me to bring over this box of cigars as a token of our appreciation. Thanks again, and... Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I'll be done. Hand over those cigars. <laughs> huh? They're mine, and I'll smoke them if it kills me. Grace. George and Gracie will return in just a moment. There's a crisis here in America, perhaps in your own community, that threatens your children's future. Our educational system is becoming increasingly inadequate. Classrooms are overcrowded, schools are understaffed. Every parent, every American should help. How? By realizing the tremendously important job our teachers perform by giving them your understanding and your support, by knowing personally your children's teachers, by joining local groups seeking to improve educational facilities, and above all, by making sure your community has the kind of school system every American youngster needs and should have. And now, here are our stars. Well, Gracie, I've got good news for you. Next week, our guest will be Walter O'Keefe. Walter O'Keefe? Oh, he's my favorite comedian. Your favorite comedian? Mm Mm-hmm. Aren't you forgetting me? Oh, Oh, that's right, I am. Sure. He's your favorite, too. Yeah, that's what I meant. Good night, everybody. Good things The easy way Do you like good things the easy way? Then get instant Maxwell House coffee So good So good True coffee flavor and fragrance Because instant Maxwell House is not a so-called coffee product It's all pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form And so easy So easy Instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup No fuss, no muss, no bother Today, try Instant Maxwell House, instantly good to the last drop. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. George and Gracie will be guests on Bing Crosby's Philco Show next week. Be sure to listen. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Keith Fowler and Paul Henning. And now stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these stations.